This episode is about Frankenstein. We're kicking off Halloween festivities a little early. Well, sort of. We're talking about gene editing, which is very much the buzz on social media right now. And I think this conversation strikes at the heart of our humanity and whether in the pursuit of perfection through science and technology, we are eroding something in our souls and we're entering a brave new world where we no longer have any compassion, empathy, or care for the most marginalized of society, which are those with special needs and disabilities. The most colloquial way of summing up this topic is designer babies. It's a simple but prominent example, and this isn't even as extreme as it's been getting lately, but I will point us to celebrities in Hollywood. I will point us to Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. When they were still married, they decided to have a baby boy via IVF or in vitro fertilization. Let me repeat that again. They decided to have a baby boy because they planned on this very specifically using IVF, which has gotten more advanced over the years. They only implanted male embryos through the IVF process. Here's a quote. Kanye loves Nori, which is Kanye's daughter, Northwest, more than anything, but to make his world complete, he wanted a little boy. An heir, a source told US Weekly about the couple's plans. So they used IVF for sex selection specifically. Another thing about Kim's third and fourth child, Chicago and Sam, they are actually fraternal twins, extracted and fertilized in the same IVF cycle, even though they are over a year apart in age. Talk about trippy, trippy science. Sam was frozen while Chicago was selected for gestation via surrogate. So it's already pretty messy. This is far too much mental gymnastics for me, but it's gotten a little bit trippier over the years. A lot trippier, actually. So just like with designer bags, Gucci, Fendi, Prada, it's the elites of society who are trying to make designer babies because they have access to the most advanced reproductive technology First, those who are lower income, more average Americans, they are not pursuing IVF because IVF is extremely expensive. So rich people are starting to use this to create the child of their dreams, not just to filter out for genetic defects or disabilities or even diseases, serious ailments, whether it's cancer or HIV, but to filter for sex or for IQ. They want intelligence superiority in the child as well. And to me, this feels like treating children not as the blessings to the world that they are, gifts in and of themselves, but as accessories or pawns that we use to inflate our own egos or to get child prodigies that we can live vicariously through. You might be thinking of the utilitarian argument, something to the effect of, oh, well, if we screen out for those serious problems, then maybe there will be less strain on the healthcare system. It's going to bring down costs for society. We'll have a more harmonious, efficient, well-functioning world. It'll make the world a better place. I will say I have a relative with autism. It's high functioning. The difference between high functioning and low functioning can be night and day. It's a very diverse, vast spectrum. Low functioning can mean that the child is mute, but the child lashes out at family members, on themselves, self-harms, has extreme anger issues, has difficulty assim assimilating into society, understanding social cues, probably won't be self-sufficient or be able to live on their own. High functioning can just mean struggles with social awkwardness, and uh, maybe has sensory issues. I say of all this to point out that, well, RFK Jr. has been at the forefront as part of the Make America Healthy Again coalition that he brought into the Trump administration is to find the root cause of autism and why so many cases have exploded over recent years because two things can be true at the same time. We can love the special light that a child with autism, with special needs brings into the world but also hope at the same time that fewer children are born with or develop autism. That being said, many autistic children lead very happy lives. Same thing with Down syndrome. And the Down syndrome question is another part of this because the argument used to go from the left that it is the most humane thing to do to abort a child in utero 
who has the makeup for Down syndrome because their life expectancy is going to be low and they're going to have a miserable quality of life. Well, that is not the case at all. But also, people with Down syndrome's life expectancy is now at around 60 years old. So you simply can't argue that anymore. We've debunked that. Shane Gillis did an amazing bit on this that was very life affirming. It's funny when you bring up Down syndrome, you can always tell who's never been around it in their lives. Like if I tell people, if I'm like, yeah, I have family members with Down syndrome, people that have never been around it are always like, oh, are they okay? Are they doing okay? It's like, they're doing better than everybody I know. <laughs> they're the only dudes I know having a good time pretty consistently. <laughs> And also, even though these people have developmental delays and social handicaps, and there's many basic things that they cannot perform on their own, I would argue from my own experience and many others who, who I know who have had relatives with special needs, that it makes you a better person to have that, that person in your life. And uh, they're people too. Now back to genetic editing, and I say this as an IVF baby myself, IVF is morally and ethically fraught. It just is, and it's getting more so. Within IVF, there's something called CRISPR, which allows for the precise editing of DNA in embryos, which then get implanted into the woman trying to become pregnant. Now, the use of CRISPR to modify human embryos, sperm, or eggs for reproductive purposes, it's called germline editing, is actually banned in many countries. There's a case study I want to share with you from the free press titled The Bride of Chinese Frankenstein and the Race to Make Designer Babies. It's about this guy He Jenkui, a Chinese biophysicist who became infamous in 2018 after announcing the birth of the first gene-edited babies, twin girls engineered for HIV immunity. Watch this clip. Grace started her pregnancy by regular IVF with one difference. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg. We're also sending a little bit of protein and instruction for a gene surgery. When Lulu and Lazla was just a single cell, this surgery removed the doorway through which HIV entered to infect people. A few days later, before returning Lulu and Lana to Greece womb, we checked how the gene surgery went by whole genome sequencing. The result indicated that the surgery worked safely as intended. Grace's pregnancy was normal, which we monitored closely by ultrasound and blood tests. After birth, we again deep sequencing Lulu and Lana's whole genome. This verified the gene surgery worked safely. No gene was changed except the one to prevent HIV infection. So he did this experiment, very precarious science. He was actually imprisoned in China for three years for doing this. He eventually was let out. He was let into the United States. And now apparently he is eyeing a lab in Austin, Texas, focused on Alzheimer's research and embryo gene editing. Why what he did was so controversial is because CRISPR historically had been used to treat diseases like sickle cell anemia, but what he wanted to do was, and what he did do, was edit embryos, permanently altering not only the babies, but all of their offspring, all of their descendants. And the ethical debate, of course, is that you're kind of treating humans like lab rats when you're doing that. We're not sure if any of this was medically necessary to do, and his experiment risked altering the human germline irresponsibly. But the supporters of gene editing say that it can eliminate diseases and enhance human evolution. This hey guy wanted this to be mainstream. He wanted cheap, very accessible gene editing. He wanted to make it like the Walmart of gene editing. A gene surgery that could save a child from a lethal genetic disease like cystic fibrosis or from an life-threatening infection like HIV. It doesn't just give that little boy or girl an equal chance at a healthy life, we heal a whole family. As a father of two girls, I can't think of a gift more beautiful and wholesome for the society than giving another couple a chance to start a loving family. The media heaped panic about the Louis Brown's birth as the first AVF baby, but for 40 years, recognition and morals 
has developed together with IVF, ensuring only therapeutic applications to have more than 8 million children came into this world. Gym surgery is another IVF advancement and is only meant to help a small number of families. For a few children, early gene surgery may be the only viable way to heal an inherited disease and prevent a lifetime suffering. We hope you have the mercy for them. Their parents don't want a desired baby, just a child who won't suffer from a disease which medicine cannot prevent. Gene surgery is and should remain a technology for healing. Enhancing IQ or selecting higher or eye color is not what a loving purple does. That should be banned. I understand my work will be controversial, but I believe family need this technology and I am willing to take the criticism for them. The twins he created are apparently alive and well. They are seven years old, but as a triplet myself, I would be really freaked out if I was one of these twins. Now, of course, Silicon Valley is obsessed with genetic optimization because they want smarter babies. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Inside Silicon Valley's growing obsession with having smarter babies. There's Svi Benson Tilson. He's a mathematician and AI safety researcher in Silicon Valley, and he's a fan of genetic technologies because he wants to create more intelligent humans to help tackle future existential risks. And he has a nonprofit dedicated to this. Now, this is becoming an industry among these elite big science brains in that part of California. Parents are paying $6,000 to, at the upper bound, $50,000 for embryo genetic screening services that now include predictions for IQ. So the question is, is this mad science that should be restricted, or is there actually a pragmatic use for this? Natural reproduction also filters out traits that are problematic because our creator is amazing and actually thought about a lot of this because most of us standing here today are healthy, are happy. Most of us do not have disabilities, but genetic editing will make it so that there are even fewer and it'll speed up the process for natural reproduction, filtering out these traits significantly. Startups like Nucleus Genomics and Herosite are advertising embryo selection based on polygenic scores for intelligence and disease risk. High-end matchmakers are even reporting that tech executives are seeking intelligent partners with the goal of producing high-performing offspring. This is very Elon Musk coded, by the way. Sure, some people are using this technology to screen for cancer, but you just know that the Bougie Bay Area couples are crunching the numbers to maximize the chances of a genius child. I think all of this is wrong, whether it's filtering out for diseases or it's trying to get the most IQ maximized child ever. But IQ obsession in Silicon Valley is mainstream. Elite preschools require IQ tests. Many parents view embryo selection as an extension of their own striving for success, striving for merit. And for the rationalists and AI people out there, they think smarter humans are actually also a defense against existential threats from AI. That might be true, but I don't know. Here's the scientific reality I've seen. Current models explain that only 5 to 10% of cognitive ability differences after doing genetic testing or genetic uh, editing rather for higher IQ, it yielded just a 3 to 4 IQ point gain on average if embryos are ranked by predicted IQ. All of this for 3 to 4 IQ point gain. And again, like it's not even the, 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 the students or the kids with the highest IQ who may end up being the most interesting people or frankly entrepreneurs who are or inventors or maybe they're creatives of some kind i i don't know if the iq assessment cut and dry is like the best barometer of like the most interesting people and experts stress that traditional methods good education good family environment mate choice finding someone 
I mean, not like literally searching the high heavens for someone who has the exact same IQ as you, but just like finding intellectual compatibility in a boyfriend or girlfriend. That's probably a more effective way and far less costly way to ensure that your offspring are smart cookies or at the very least like well-adjusted. Like I'm not even hoping that all of my children go to college. I'm just hoping that all of my children are normal and well-adjusted and healthy, have good coping mechanisms, can self-soothe. I'm hoping that some of my children become plumbers. I'm hoping some of them go into trades. I'm really not looking for, you know, scholars here, although if that's what some of them end up becoming, great. But I'm not, like, willing this into existence the way these, like, anal Silicon Valley couples are doing. Chill out. One last question to pose to you here. If there's a rise of a genetic elite, rich business people who are filtering out for the best qualities, isn't that eugenics? And isn't that also exacerbating social inequality? But fundamentally, it's playing God. And as a Christian, I believe that's messed up. Not just because we shouldn't be engineering kids in a lab, but because it also further sidelines those with special needs and it takes something away from our collective humanity that is very serious and very grave. And I think we are dismissing that. I'll end with this. George Will, the amazing prolific writer, said on the 40th birthday of his eldest son, who was born with Down syndrome, this era of Roe v. Wade has coincided not just coincidentally with the full garish flowering of the baby boomers' vast sense of entitlement, which encompasses an entitlement to exemption from nature's mishaps and to a perfect baby. Speaking of gene editing, Sydney Sweeney, the actress, got accused of the most outlandish thing, eugenics, in a recent ad campaign for denim for American Eagle. For more on that, click here.